promising them to stop Payment is only the rock So I take water and soda They hit them with lyrics And mix them up all in the pot While in the jungle They won't be tamed Keep them alive but without a brain They want me broke with a lot of pain Smiling but he in a lot of pain Till he tap out like a lot of names You gotta give me what's old Taking control No, this is not a game, no It's time for another edition of Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball presented by TireRack.com. I'm your host, Tony Simeone, joined as always by the head coach, Mike Bray. Coach, this last week, you went 2-0. You went on the road to get a big win at Louisville at home against NC State. You get it done. What was your takeaway from the week? Well, anytime you can have a 2-0 week and we meet together, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good day. And, and, you know, it was two teams that had our number a little bit. You know, Louisville on the road, we hadn't won there since 2015. I thought we did some fearless stuff in the second half. I thought our defense was excellent, our passing was excellent. And then NC State was one of those ugly, grinding, how do you escape kind of games. I give a lot of credit to our defense again to get us out with a win. You alluded to it, but I want to ask you about the psychological nature going down. You said you hadn't won at the Yum Center in nearly seven years. You hadn't beat NC State in over four years. To get those monkeys off the back, how big is that for you and your team? I, th I think it gives you confidence, Tony. There's no question about it. Like we said, Louisville had our number. State, NC State had had our number. Um, I think it gives this group, especially these seniors who had not had a lot of success against Louisville or NC State, Leshevsky, Goodwin, Hub, you know, I, I think it gives them a lot of confidence moving forward. Coach, thanks. When we come back, we'll break down both games between Louisville and NC State on this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball, presented by TireRack.com. Welcome back to Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball, presented by TireRack.com. It's now time to break down the Louisville win. You guys won by 12 in this game, but it was a really tough one. Going into that environment, Coach, is never easy. You hadn't won there in nearly seven years. As you got ready for this game, what was the message going into the contest? You know, it's such a great basketball atmosphere. I think our guys are really excited to play. 16,000 people, they're retiring a jersey of Russ Smith, so there was energy in the building, and man, did Louisville come out firing. Mm -hmm and we were trying to hold on for dear life in the first half. Uh, but I thought in the second half, we got the tempo under control, we defended the three-point line better, and then we got rolling offensively. And when we start getting into our rhythm of passing and finding open people and getting our feet set on three-point shots, it's, uh, it's really fun to watch. Let's talk about the first half. Early on was a really weird start, I thought. You turned it over, I think, on your first three possessions, and then you went 10 for your first 10. I mean, the offense was clicking. I mean, throughout the entire game, it was great, but in that first 10 for 10 stretch, what'd you see that stuck out to you? Well, it was, you know, I think it was a great game to watch. Everybody texted me after the game, because, and I told the ref at halftime, I said, you know, the ball's going in. This is a fun game. Ball's going in the basket. Um, you know, we were in a pretty good offensive rhythm. We were excited to play. I just thought, we played a little too fast along with them. And that's why they had seven more points than us at halftime and 45 and had us on our heels. Um, second half, much better tempo. You mentioned the first half where they were, I believe they shot nine of 13 from three. You guys shot 65%, and as you said, you were down by seven. I'm not sure I've ever seen a team shoot 65% from the floor and be trailing by seven at halftime. So when you were in the locker room, what was the message? Because they were pouring them in from spots that you weren't expecting them to make the shots. You know, I, I'm glad you brought that up. I said, look, there's no way they're gonna keep firing like that, and I don't think they can fire with us. I don't think a lot of people in the league can shoot with us if we're taking good shots. So let's hang in there. Let's keep getting out on def defending the arc and let's make sure we control the tempo a little bit better. And I thought we did that. A big story in a lot of these games recently has been the way you guys shoot the three. But I thought the way you came out of the locker room was really impressive. Paul Atkinson Jr. got you going with a big and one. He had some big baskets. He kind of flies under the radar now with the way you're shooting the three. What did you like from Paul in the second half? Well, he is our low post presence and you you know, with our shooters around him, it's hard to double it. It's hard, and he's such a good passer. Um, so we love going in there. First play to second half, they go zone, we go to him three-point play, mm -hmm. which is a good sign, you know, to start the second half. But we want him getting low post touches, and he's very unselfish kicking it out to our guys that are open. I wanted to bring up someone else too, Cormac Ryan. Your team, I think everybody had two or more field goals in this game. I mean, everybody was pouring it in. He had a couple big threes too in the middle portion of this second half. What did it mean to see all seven guys contributing in this game? I thought it was the one game 
really in this stretch where all seven had a huge impact. You know, we have had games that we've won where you go, you know, five played well, two didn't, four played well, three didn't. You know, that was a all seven kind of effort. And the more we can capture that, the better. You went on the road. It was the first time you got really a win. You didn't have to sweat out down the stretch. Let me ask you the last question on this game. What did it feel like to not have to sweat out the final minutes? Well, to be honest with you, I looked at the scoreboard two or three times when we were up double digits because I didn't believe it. <laughs> you know, we have not been up double digits and I'm doing the math and I'm going, is that right? Is that score right? We've got a 10 point lead with four minutes to go. Um, but I think what you saw was solid defense and then you know, what our programs, you know, lightning strike kind of offense, which can help your defense. When you can be so efficient like that, it can demoralize a team on the other end and it helps your defense and your defensive rebounding. Coach, appreciate it. When we come back, we'll break down the win against NC State on this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball presented by Tyrac.com. Welcome back to Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball presented by TireRack.com. It's now time to break down the win over NC State coach. You came into this game back at home, the first of three in a row at home. Of course, a lot of people, myself included, are looking ahead to Virginia and Duke, but you have an NC State team on the schedule that has had your number as of late. You hadn't beat them in the last four years. What was your message to the team to ensure that they focused on this game on Wednesday night? Well, with everything coming at us, you know, over the next 10 days, we kind of just segmented Monday and Tuesday practice and Wednesday's game. That's it. I don't want to talk about anything else. Two good days of practice and Wednesday's prep. And we knew we were going to play a really gifted offensive team that just scored 77 on Virginia and made 12 threes. Guards are going to take you off the dribble. And that's the scouting report on us, you know, open up the floor and drive us. Mm -hmm. And, and I thought we really held our own defensively, really for all 40 minutes to sit down in a stance and make it tough getting by us. I wanted to ask about your defensive approach because you mentioned it, uh, what they do, but they have a trio that's got the most points of any trio in the conference in Smith, Sebron, and Hellam. So when you game plan for three guys like that, what do you have to do? What did, they, what did your team have to really key on to ensure they didn't go off against you? I think the key was that our bigs, Nate and Paul, could really help off of their guy because their lone big was really not a scorer or a shooter. And I thought both of them, especially Nate in the second half, was fabulous at coming over on their guards, hanging around, sometimes switching it, just to make it tough for those guys to drive and shoot runners. We also were very aware of the three-point line and we rode our zone for about six or seven possessions. You mentioned Prentice, let's talk about him. He played 40 minutes in this game, didn't sit out for a single second, five assists, no turnovers. He's had some games this year where he's turned the ball over, but in conference play, his assist to turnover is almost five to one. I mean, it's been remarkable what he's done in conference play. I talked to you after the game, you just said this is one of those games you didn't feel like you could take him off the floor. You know, with them picking up full court and Blake is a freshman against college guys that are pressing, I, I just didn't feel we could ever get him off the floor. And that was like the old days, him playing the full 40 and we'll get him some rest, you know, the next day. But. Um, you know, the, the, there's we've won nine out of ten. There's something about Hub being back in the starting lineup to jumpstart this thing and having him getting himself right. He wasn't completely right. Kids go sure. through that, and us helping him get him right. He stirs the drink for us. He is my Mahomes, and <laughs> and I've said it many times. You know, through the years, he has been Mahomes in league play. I want to ask you about the freshman Blake Wesley. Only was three of 16 from the floor, but I thought he got a huge steal and a breakaway basket for you. There was also a possession where he missed a layup, got two offensive rebounds, got to the line. He had some great passes to Dane to set him up for a couple of those threes. It seems like even when he doesn't have it going offensively, your team is still really comfortable putting the ball in his hands late shot clock, and he's finding other ways to contribute and create when he might not be having his best offensive performance. I think he's been mature beyond his years when shots aren't going in, it hasn't completely taken him away mentally. Mm -hmm. He's able to bounce back and plug back in. I've taken him out maybe when he's in a rough stretch, he doesn't get mad, he doesn't get frustrated, and he goes back in and he's back in gear. And and that's maturity, you know? And, and again, I think he has great trust and the assistants talk to him when he's over there. Um, but I think our guys know, obviously, him with the ball at the end of a clock, 
is good for us. And we talked, he was able to get to the rim a couple times. And at that last time out, I said, you may want to kick now. They're really biting. And man, did he find Dane. And you know, that was the dagger. Last one I have for you before we take a break. Obviously you got the big ones coming up, Virginia and Duke, but you mentioned you've won nine of 10, you've won 10 of 12, really going back to Kentucky. Have you taken the time to just reflect on how this team has really turned this season around after maybe a rocky first month? I, I do, I'm, I'm proud of them. I'm very proud of them. And, and I think we, um, we came into it knowing we had to be better defensively. And I think we, were, we addressed that through the summer. I don't think I did a great job getting us as organized offensively because I was so distracted on how much we needed to improve defensively. And we weren't that bad offensively last year and had a lot of the same personnel back. But I think some of the things we did between Boston College and Kentucky with some predictable movement and some structure offensively has helped our guys with more of a plan. And, and that's really helped us. Coach, appreciate it. We'll step aside and come back with more on this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball, presented by TireRack.com. Welcome back to Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball presented by TireRack.com. It's now time for this week's edition of Irish Intel Coach. So this is in the midst of your 15-0 run. Nate Leshesky has really sparked you guys to start out of the timeout uh, when you're down by five. You're now up by five here. He makes a great defensive play that leads to another three. He is such an anchor defensively. He ends up switching here on a guard and just rides with him and makes a great defensive play. And then our quarterback here, is smart enough to know, you know what? He's just made one, I'm gonna get him another one. And I just think his whole vibe is so confident right now, but I can't, I can't say enough about what Nate does defensively in the back there, being unselfish, rotating, anchoring over, and then to convert here and understand your personnel. This is a senior point guard knowing, I got a guy who's going, he's getting this one. I was gonna ask, how much of this is Prentice Hub being a senior, a veteran? So much of being the point guard isn't just distributing, it's knowing who to distribute to and when in the game. He knows the hot hand is with Nate right now, right? He does, and, and there's two guys that have played a lot of basketball together since their freshman year. It's really cool to see him find the guy that he came in with you know, four years ago and find him. And uh, uh, there was no doubt, he, you know, he was in a mode. Nate, you know, was in such a mode, but uh, Nate Leshevsky doing on our, both ends of the floor right now. All right, coach, this is in the final minute of the game against NC State. You're up six. You guys have been comfortable going to Blake Wesley deep in the clock. He's going to find a way to create instead of Dane Goodwin for the dagger. Well, this is a big possession and we like Blake having that ball at the end and, and, and his teammates know, give it to him, ball screen for him, and then have your hands ready. And he makes a great adjustment as they help to find Dane for the dagger right there. And that's the growth of Blake Wesley, of understanding the weapons around him and when to go to the hole and when to kick it out. But just a great read right here. We've got Hub over there. We got Dane over there with their hands ready and Dane with a quick release, and uh, no doubt, he is a dagger guy. I wanna go back and just look at it real quick. Blake attracts the attention of four defenders <laughs> here. He's not had his best offensive game, but it just tells you how much the conference fears his ability to get to the rim, right? Yeah, the scouting report, Tony, is out on him, and we talked in the timeout. I said, Blake, you're probably gonna have to kick this one. You're not gonna get to the rim. And, you know, he made me, you know, makes me look good as a coach, but it's just, and he avoids the charge here too. You know, he's in the air, but he kind of glides through both people. But with his length, he can make that play. They overhelp, and Dane knows three seconds on the shot clock, I'm firing. Catch and fire, and, you know, just a great execution right there. And we've been in, you know, we have been in a lot of hard games. That's one of my messages. I say, We've been in more hard. We, we're better at winning hard games. Guess what? Saturday and Monday are hard games. Thanks, Coach. When we come back, we'll have this week's edition of Irishography on Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball, presented by TireRack.com. So Matt, the team's playing really well right now. You guys have won nine of the last 10, 10 of your last 12. What do you think's been working well for the team as of late? I, mean, I think we're a really old team, which is helping us. Uh, these guys have played together for a long time and the vibe they have playing together is really awesome. Uh, just coming to practice every day, like there's an energy on this team that's you know really infectious and we feel real good about ourselves. I'm thinking back to the Boston College game, probably the low point of the season for the team. I wanna ask you, was there anything specifically that stuck out between that and the Kentucky game when you guys have really gone on this run that maybe turned the season around? 
And that week after the Boston College game, uh, practice was real contentious, and you know, guys really going at it and uh, holding each other accountable. And uh, we felt really good uh, after that, uh, just really being able to get together and uh, keep playing like this. Let me ask you about practice, because you know you haven't been on the floor a ton this year, but I know practice is a place where you can always have an impact. How do you approach practice, and how do you try to go out there and ensure that you can help the team get better each and every week? Well, I try to, you know, first of all, help the team get better. Um, and then on top of that, trying to help build my game a little bit. And I know I haven't played a whole lot this year, but uh, continuing to get good practice reps and playing hard is all I can do. How do you keep that mindset? So how do you go to practice to try to keep improving your game so that if and when your number is called in a big spot this year, you're ready to perform? I just know that if my number is called, I have to perform, and that's what I'm going to do. So going every day and just you know, using that as a way to keep going is what I'm going to do. Let's talk about the home games this season. Last season, of course, there were no fans. This year, you guys are 8-0 at home. We talked about it before we started here that the crowds have been great at all these games. The fans, the student section have been awesome. What's it been like to play in these environments this year? Well, last year as a freshman, like we were going and there was no one in any of the arenas and it was, you know, it kind of took a toll on you a little bit, like having to really, you know, BYOE bring your own energy and we, we had to do that. But this year, like the fans have been awesome. You know, it's been really infectious for us, like getting to the, uh, our home gym and like seeing, you know, 2000 students just yelling, it's awesome. I want to ask you about your journey to Notre Dame. What went into the process to decide to come to school here and be a part of this team? As you were making your decision, what drew you to Notre Dame? Uh, I think when I came my visit, it felt like I really fit in here. Uh, all the guys on the team are awesome. And just, uh, you know, the education you get here is second to none. So that with basketball, like, coupled together is awesome. I want to ask you about the two games you have coming up, Virginia and Duke, two of the best programs in the conference, at least as of late. This isn't a stretch people have been looking forward to this season for a long time. What's the mindset of the team as you guys get set for these two big games? Yeah, you know, we got we got three big games, kind of four big games. We got a long stretch here that we got to get some wins. And, uh, you know, I think we're second in the league right now. We really got to keep building on the momentum we have and get these uh, ones because they're big. Thanks, Matt. When we come back, we'll look ahead at Notre Dame's upcoming games against Virginia and Duke on this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball presented by TireRack.com. Welcome back to Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball presented by TireRack.com. It's now time to wrap up this week's episode. Coach, you're coming up on a really big two-game home stretch here. Virginia and Duke, two great teams coming up. Let's start with Virginia. They obviously have such a notable style. They're going to really slow it down. Great defense always under Tony Bennett. When you prepare for them, what do you have to key on as you get ready for the Cavaliers? Well, there's never been two different styles coming at us within three days in Virginia and Duke. Virginia grinding. You have to guard more off the ball screens. They're not as much a ball screening team. Tempo maybe last in the NCAA. And so you got to defend and you got to defend long possessions, which I think our guys are trained to. I think the biggest concern is you must be efficient offensively and you can't take quick shots or bad shots because now you're playing defense for another 30 seconds on the other end. You mentioned Duke coming up on Monday. They, of course, have a ton of talent. They always do. It's also going to be Coach K's last trip to Purcell Pavilion. I'm sure there's a lot that goes through the mind there. Of course, you're very familiar with him. As you prepare for Duke, what goes through your mind as you get ready for this game? Well, it's a racetrack now. Now we go from the Virginia grind to the racetrack, the Daytona 500. They are coming at us with really gifted offensive players. So a challenge for our defense. We're going to have to score to escape them. I don't think you just shut down gifted offensive guys. Obviously, the, the building will be electric. And, 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 you know, there's some emotion with Coach K, with Mike Krzyzewski. Mike gave me an opportunity in 1987 to be an assistant with him when I was a high school assistant. I'll always be indebted to him giving me an opportunity and training me to be a head coach. Coach, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a really fun week. That does it for this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Men's Basketball, presented by TireRack.com.